Good morning. That was quick. Threw me off a little bit. Good morning. Snowing here today. Um, snowing, definitely. I was looking at different radars that are out um, on National Weather Service. It's been a long time since I went to NOAA's, uh, oh shoot, I'm out of coffee. NOAA's uh, Weather Service, and they're, they've changed it a lot. And if you ever get bored, go to NOAA.com or NOAA.gov. Search for NOAA, and, excuse me, National Oceanographic and Aeronautic Association, NOAA, um, and look at their weather stuff. You can put in your zip code, uh, and it'll give you your local weather, and then and then you can click on the forecast maps and stuff. But I remember when I go and they'd have like three or four radar options available, but now they've got, um, thank you, they've got the, the different wave bands and everything for near IR and short short wave and long wave and it's just there's must have been 15 different weather maps you could look at <clears throat> i used to really get into that kind of stuff when i lived in a mobile home and storms were coming i bonnie used to call it dave's weather center because i'd have <clears throat> a little had a little four inch or uh, six inch maybe um television up on one side of my desk with um we were in, in Westby at the time, so CBS had the strongest signal and the best radar and everything at that time. I had CBS going. I had the National Weather Service radio, my, my weather radio going. And on the computer, I'd have four or five different maps open. Of course, that was in the days when the Internet was slow, you know, like dial-up. Remember that? And, um, and I only had one monitor, so I had to get had to have the screens there was one time that, that a tornado was coming down in westby and um, before the sirens went off and the weather service called it bonnie and i and uh, at that time jean luc were in the truck and headed down to my parents farm and we got about halfway down the farm to the farm and the uh, sirens started going off <laughs> because bonnie was not going to be caught in a mobile home in a tornado it just wasn't going to happen all right Good morning. Like I said, snow falling here, uh, kind of a wintry mix at the moment. Bonnie said for the for the first time ever taking Zan up to Tomahawk wasn't bad, but coming back was rough, and she had to report a car in the in the ditch to the Lincoln County Sheriff's Office. So um, it was a rough trip, she said. And so the the roads are slick today. Um, not school cancellation or anything like that. Slick, just rough. Uh, so uh, what are we doing? Oh, we're saying hi to everybody. Let's see who's here. Cindy, good morning to you. Good snowy morning, yes. Jerry, good morning. Foggy, foggy over in Michigan, huh? And uh, Mushtaq, good evening. Ashley, good morning. Geraldine and Neil, good morning to you guys. Verna, good morning. Leela, good morning. Kathy, hello. Foggy in Broad City as well, okay. And Anne, good morning. Renee, good morning. Drizzly and fog. Oh, so you got drizzle too. You guys just aren't as cold as we are. It's just how it is. Well, of course, you know, when, when Renee, when you and I used to talk about the weather in Wisconsin, I was talking about down by La Crosse and, and Westby, which is two and a half, three hours south of here. Um, and now, well, yeah, Bonnie said three and a half, four hours. Yeah, it's three and a half or four hours south of here as you take the road, but you can't get there from here. You got to go down and over to get there. So it's about three hours. If, if, if you went parallel, straight down, it's about three hours. Um, and now I'm living, um, and, and Mar so Marlette was also um, north, but north of where, no, it was south of where Westby was. Yeah, Marlette was south of where Westby was. It doesn't seem like it. Everybody thinks Michigan's north of Wisconsin, but it's not. And we were about level with Milwaukee in Marlette. Now we're living up Michigan-wise. I've said this before, but like the the Tawas, Travis City area across. Um, but we don't have the advantage of the lake to hold the temperature and keep us warm, or to cause the humidity either. Although we have a lot of little lakes. Bonnie says the trees are our humidity. Well, and that's right where we are. That's true too. We're surrounded by. Oaks and pines. All right, let's keep moving here. So good morning, Renee. Connie and Robin, good morning. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll send her right up, Connie. Um, and she says, come on down. <laughs> Don't come down. The roads aren't good. I mean, you're welcome, but the roads aren't good. 
Uh, Deb, Grant, good morning to you. Internet work, really working better. I'm, well, I hope you've got your part. That must be what that is. Uh, so good morning, everybody. Let's um, let's get down to what we're what we're here for. Let's get down to our daily devotions here. Uh, if you have the Lutheran Service Book, page two ninety five. Daily prayer for individuals and families. That's the order that we use each morning. I have my treasury of daily prayer right here. And we, and so here we go. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm today, on this fourth day of January, our psalm is 40, uh, verses 6 through 10. Sacrifice and offering you have not desired, but you have given me an open ear. Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required, then I said, Behold, I have come. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. I desire to do your will, O my God. Your law is within my heart. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. Behold, I have not restrained my lips, as you know, O Lord. I have not hidden your deliverance within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the great congregation. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hey, there's Bonnie piping in. Yeah, wintry mix. We're at we're at 30, or are we at 32, or are we at 28? Or are we messy? Sacrifice and offering you have not desired but you have given me an open ear. Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. God commanded the offerings in the law. Um, as thanksgiving um, and as atonement for sin, both against him and against one another. You can go read Leviticus if you want and, and, and uh, see all of that. It might be might be fun to do that sometime. Just read through Leviticus a little bit at a time, but oh, it gets so dry. Not all of it, but um, but that is not what God desired. He He, he desires faithfulness, right? Um, and and um, by the time that Christ comes, the the people of of the Jews, the people of Judea, are are making their. I don't want to say it. There's there's their offerings, their sacrifices, are being brought, not in faith, but in obedience to to the law. Not, that's not across the board. Uh, but many of them are being are, are just going through the motions. I like to say. Um. But that's not what God had commanded of them. What God had commanded of them was that they be that they that they be faithful and and that they that they do these sacrifices, that they make these sacrifices and bring these offerings in faithfulness to God, trusting that that He will do what He has said, and and in thanksgiving and anticipation bring these things, trusting in Him. Um, but what does it say? It says sacrifice and offering and not desired. You have given me an open ear, right? An ear with which to hear your promises, right? And then to believe them. Um, yeah. And so verse 8 says, I desire to do your will, O my God. Your law is within my heart. And that's, that's the response of faithfulness. I want to do your will, Lord. That's... That's Christ at the Garden of Gethsemane. Your will be done. It, it, uh, if possible, Lord, uh, Father, he says, if possible, take this cup from me. But if it be your will, then let it be. And that's probably the 
one of the most difficult things for us as human beings to do is to say, Lord, your will be done, not mine, right? Because we always want what we want, uh, but, but God calls us to be faithful, and in being faithful, your will be done, not mine. If it's possible, Lord, do what I pray for, do what I ask, and, and, and I pray you would help me in the way that I have asked, but your will be done, not mine. All right, let's move on to our reading today. Our reading is from Isaiah 63, continuing where we left off yesterday, 63, 15 through 65, 7. Sixty-three, fifteen, and following. Look down from heaven and see from your holy and beautiful habitation. Where are your zeal and your might? The stirring of your inner parts and your compassion are held back from me. For you are our father, though Abraham does not know us. And Israel does not acknowledge us. You, O Lord, are our father. Our redeemer from of old is your name. O oh Lord, why do you make us wander from your ways and harden our heart so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage, your holy people held possession for a little while. Our adversaries have trampled down your sanctuary. We have become like those who over whom you have ruled. Or, or, I'm sorry, we have become like those over whom you have never ruled, like those who are not called by your name. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood, and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, and that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome things that we did not look for, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From of old, no one has heard or perceived by the ear, no eye has seen a God besides you, who acts for those who wait for him. You meet him who joyfully works righteousness, those who remember you in your ways. Behold, you are angry, and we sinned. In our sins we have been a long time, and shall we be saved? We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us, and have made us melt in the hand of our iniquities. But now, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Be not so terribly angry, O Lord, and remember not iniquity forever. Behold, please look, we are all your people. Your holy cities have become a wilderness. Zion has become a wilderness. Jerusalem, a, desolate, a desolation. Our holy and beautiful house where our fathers praised you has been burned by fire, and all our peasant, pleasant places have become ruins. Will you restrain yourself at these things, O Lord? Will you keep silent and afflict us so terribly? I was ready to be sought by those who did not ask for me. I was ready to be found by those who did not seek me. I said, here am I, here am I, to a nation that was not called by my name. I spread out my hands all the day to a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good, following their own devices, a people who provoke me to my face continually sacrificing in gardens and making offering on bricks, who sit in tombs and spend the night in secret places, who eat pig's flesh and broth of tainted meat is in their vessels, who say, keep to yourself, do not come near me, for I am too holy for you. These are a smoke in my nostrils, a fire that burns all the day. Behold, it is written before me, I will not keep silent, I, but I will repay. I will indeed repay into their bosom both your iniquities and your father's iniquities together, says the Lord, because they made offerings on the mountains and insulted me on the hills. 
I will measure into their bosom payment for their former deeds. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um, salvation and condemnation spread throughout. Uh, you are our father, though Abraham does not know us, and Israel does not acknowledge us. You, O Lord, are our father. Um, Israel did not recognize God as father. They recognized him as God, creator, Lord Almighty, El Shaddai, God Most High, but not Father. A, a father is uh, a person who a child can entreat, that is to say, come before uh, peacefully and, and in hope. Um, in Christ's death and resurrection, in our baptism, we have received God as our Father. Abraham didn't know us. We're, we're Gentiles. We're ethne, uh, goya. Um, we're not of of the people of Israel. Abraham doesn't know us, and 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 Israel does not acknowledge us. And yet, God has made Himself our Father. He has made us His children. Even when we wander from his ways, when he, he has hardened our heart as he did with Pharaoh and others, we call upon him to return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. Come back for the sake of Israel and, and bring us with them. Um, that's kind of the idea that's going through here. We get to chapter 64, it picks up in the middle of all of this, that you would rend the heavens and come down that mountains might quake at your presence as when fire kindles brushwood and, or, and the fire causes water to boil to make your name known to your adversaries so that nations might tremble at your presence. That is, that is the coming of Christ and the return of Christ. Uh, um, from of old, no one is heard or perceived by the ear. No eye has seen a God besides you. There is no other God, right? The, the gods that people have created, that people created for themselves, the idols that Israel worshipped of stone and metal, wood, uh, clay, um, they're dead, they're mute, they're silent, they're, they can do nothing. It is, it is the Father, the Son, the Spirit, the triune God who does all things for us. Um, no one has seen another God, right? But when Christ comes, we see God and know God, not by what we have done, but by what he does as he reveals the Father to us. We have this triune God, and how can you know the triune God? Well, you can only know, it, the Father is only known to the Son and to whom those uh, he shows him, he reveals him. And he reveals him by the word, the scriptures, um, and, and by the gift of the Holy Spirit. Everyone can know there's a God. All you got to do is look out the window and you, and you can see God. Understand that, that nature cannot by itself do these things. I mean, even science, the more science investigates uh, the world around us, the more uh, science doesn't understand. Uh, and the more that the more that scientists have to take a step back and go, yeah, there's more going on here than we can understand. Not all scientists, right? Some of them are just hard-hearted individuals and refuse. But the scientists that confront the realities of of the creation um, find out that that there's more to it than atoms and molecules and and heat and cold and energy. Um, you were angry, we sinned, and we have been in our sins a long time. Shall we be saved? Yes. From the foundation of the world, from the fall into sin, uh, God said, I will send the 
seed of a woman to crush the serpent's head, although his own heel will be bruised. Um, and it was from the time that God said, I'm going to do this, it was nearly 4,000 years. And yet he did it. And when Jesus died and rose and ascended, he said, I'll be back. I'll be back. I'll, I'll be with you until the ends of the age, but I will return. I'm coming on uh, clouds of power and glory. As I ascended, so I shall descend. Um, and that time will come too. But our God, thank, thankfully, our God doesn't work in our time. He works in his in His time. And, and every day that goes by is another day to... Uh, to share his, uh, his his promises, his gifts, to to speak of uh, what, what what did the psalmist say here? Um, uh, to to uh, tell the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation, right? To 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 speak of Christ to others that others might be be believers and be saved. We're all unclean. No one. All our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment before you. We fade like a leaf. We're dead. Our iniquities, like, like the wind, take us away. No one calls upon your name. Who rouses himself to take hold of you? Right? We cannot, by our own reason or strength, come to our Lord Jesus Christ. But he calls us by his, by his Holy Spirit. But now, O oh Lord... You are our Father. We are the clay, you are the potter. And the potter cannot tell the, the, the pot cannot tell the potter that he's done something wrong. We are all the work of your hand. Don't be so angry. Do not look on our iniquity. But please look. We are your people. We are all your people. And so God responds in chapter 65. He says, I was ready to be sought by those who did not ask for me. I was ready to be found by those who did not seek me. And that's you and I. That's the, the Gentiles of the world. I said, here am I, here am I to a nation that has not called, was not called by my name, not the chosen people. I spread out my hands all the day to a rebellious people. I spread out my hands all the day to a rebellious people. There's a squirrel running in the backyard. <laughs> a people who provoke me, who sacrifice in gardens, make offerings on bricks, who sit in tombs and spend the night in secret places, right? The worship of idols and false worship, who say, keep to yourself and don't come near me, for I am too holy for you. I'm always amused by people say who say, I can't go to church. It's full of hypocrites. I don't want to be part of a church. It's full of hypocrites. I don't want to be part of an organized church because it's full of hypocrites. Oh, I see. You are better than us. You are, you are so much more holy than those who go to the Lord knowing their sins, confessing them, and seeking his forgiveness and his patience. Keep to yourself. Do not come near me, or I am too holy for you. These are a smoke in my nostrils, a fire that burns all the day. What does smoke do when it gets in your nose? It's an irritant, right? It's not the pleasant smell of incense, right? Let my prayers, my evening prayer rise before you as incense. But it, this is the smoke of a wood fire that, that irritates and perturbs. Friends, that's what Isaiah is telling us. He's telling us that the Lord is in judgment over Israel and all peoples, but at the same time that he has sent the answer. He has become our Father through His Son, by placing us in His Son, in Christ, so that through Christ we can be, we can understand Him to be our Father. We can know Him to be our Father, who loves us and cares for us, who we can turn to in our time of need and call upon, even as, you know, as as dear children call upon their dear Father. That's the gift we've been given in Christ. That's the the promise that God has given us by the death and resurrection of his son. That's what we have that we share each day so that others might know as well that Christ died for you, for the forgiveness of your sins. And he rose again on the, on the third day so that you too might have a resurrection like his and the promise of eternal life. That you might be brought into the promises of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob through the blood of Christ.
Amen. Let's look to our prayer of the day. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have poured into our hearts the true light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light may shine forth in our lives through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And for ourselves and others on this Wednesday morning, O Father in heaven, you make the sun rise on the evil and on the good, and send rain on the just and on the unjust. Despite the many sins and failures of your chosen Israel, you mercifully provided for them during the, their whole 40 years of wandering in the wilderness with Moses. And your Son, my Savior Jesus Christ, not only fed more than 5,000 with bread and fish, but he also taught them the truth that he is the bread of life. With the same loving mercy, you teach us not to worry or be anxious about anything. For even the birds of the air and the grass of the field are tended and nourished by your fatherly hand. In your eyes, I am more valuable than they. So call my heart and mind, which so often wander into anxiety, doubt, and fear. When I worry about the cares of this life, quiet my troubled soul and redirect me to you, who longs to hear such prayers. Remind me of your love and the providence for all people, even sinners such as me. Help me also to learn the virtue of contentment, recognizing the many great blessings you have given me already, and having a thankful and cheerful heart at all times. This in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Right. And for the integrity invocation, O oh Lord, Heavenly Father, you have promised to watch over your children wherever they may be and guide them in all their ways. Be my guide in work and help me to work in such a way that you will be pleased. Give me the wisdom necessary to make the proper decisions and problems that confront me daily. Above all, remind me continuously by your Spirit that you have called me by your gospel to be your child and that it is my business at all times to be a Christian. Give me a better understanding of my Christian vocation so that all I do in my work reflects glory upon you, my Heavenly Father. Guide me in paths of integrity and honesty for your name's sake so that you would never be mocked because I denied you through hypocrisy and dishonesty. Forgive me when I refuse you as Lord, even as you forgave Peter when he denied you. Help me to use my talents wisely in my work for I want to give a good account of my stewardship. Enable me to be a blessing to those with whom and for whom I work, to their joy and glory, to their joy and your glory. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we ask that you assure and comfort those who suffer in body, mind, or soul, whether it be the effects of age or illness or injury. Grant them strength in their hour of need, O Lord, even as your will be done. We ask this, especially for those who have asked for our prayers this day, Pat, Lois, Anne, Brianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Dan, Ezra, Neely, Jeremy, and all who call upon your most holy name. 
Grant them this for the sake of and in the name of your Son, who is our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end. That our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that brings our morning devotions to a close for this January 4th. God's peace be with you. Hey, Mike, glad that you uh, made it here. Bob and Jeannie, good morning. I don't know if I just missed you or what the deal is, but uh, good morning. God's blessings, and we'll see you uh, back here tomorrow, Thursday morning, for our time together in God's Word. God's peace be with you.